So besides the obvious purpose of providing an electrical connection, uh, the connectors also have other functions because they're also there to provide a weather resistant connection in your electrical circuit. And the extent to which they are weather resistant is expressed with the IP rating, the ingress protection rating. So this topic is important for both your connectors and junction boxes, etc. And I'll dive later into the ingress protection rating when we're looking at junction boxes. And then they come with their own certification system regarding the operating voltage under which you can still safely use a specific connector. So they're normally rated up to 600 volt or 1500 volt DC, which is quite amazing. They continue to make improvements in these, um, in these materials. And the last one I want to mention is that the connectors are also there to provide a certain, a certain level of protection uh, against disconnecting the wires under, under live load. So they definitely have a locking me mechanism that they cannot be unlocked just by, by pulling on the wires. And they also, if they would be disconnected under live operating conditions, which is definitely not advisable, then at least they provide a certain amount of protection as one would be doing that. So let's go to the whiteboard and let's look at the general layout of one specific kind of connector that you most likely come across. Uh, it's a single contact connector called MC4, which stands for multi contact four millimeter. And this is a specific model, specific product of one supplier, one manufacturer. I am not affiliated with it. I just want to show you what this one looks like so that you've got a bit of an idea if you come across this connector. So here we have an extruded view of a typical MC4 connector. And this connector is actually a female. Don't let yourself be fooled. Like normally you always have a male and a female connector, right? And this kind of looks like a male connector because you have the, the plastic part sticking out and the metal part sticking out. But actually when we zoom in on the metal part, the metal part is actually the receiving side. So this connector is a female connector. Now you've got the five different components. So you've got the end cap that screws onto the main body. And between there, you've got the, the two components that make the, the plug weatherproof. You can also see that on the, on the main plastic housing, there's also a bit of a, a rubber ring, another a sealant ring. And then you have the actual metal connection that slides inside of the plastic housing. And then what we do, we take our wire, we lead it through all the components and then the actual electrical connection is made on the metal part where we squeeze the metal part around the, the wire. And then we screw everything together and now we have a completely assembled female connector, right? Don't be fooled by the plastic protruding, which is normally uh, showing that it's a male connector. This is a completely assembled female MC4 connector. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. Now let's do the same for the male connector. So we have an end cap, we have the, the plastic body, and then in between we've got the two components that make it the weatherproof. And then we have the metal bit on the end where we actually connect the wire to. Right? So the wire goes through all the components and then we clamp the metal part on there where we make the electrical connection. And you can see again that the, the main plastic housing kind of looks like a female connector, but this is the male connector, right? Because the, the metal pin on the end is actually the one that goes into the other female connector. And then the beauty about these connectors is that as you are connecting them, the two pins are locking in place and they're avoiding that the connectors can come apart, right? If by accident somebody's pulling a little bit on the wire, there's some kind of a tension on it, these clips, they prevent that the connectors can disconnect. And make sure that if you are connecting the MC4 connectors, the male into the female, that you really hear the click. Sometimes you have to push a little bit harder in order to get that rubber seal to completely seal. And only then both the clips need to clip. So make sure that they're fully in and that they completely lock in place. And to make sure I properly got my point across regarding the female and the male, when you look at the, when you look at the right hand side, right? The right hand side has got a plastic body that looks like a male connection. And on the left hand side, we have a plastic body that looks like a female, but we actually call them the other way around because we focus on the metal parts. If you try to look inside, you'll see that on the right hand side, that connector has a receiving metal connector. 
but on the left hand side all the way in there you can see that it's got a protruding um, metal connector so the the right hand side the metal will slide into the right hand side connector right so just focus on the metal parts if you want to know which one is male or female focus on the metal parts so the right hand side is the female connector the one with the the locking clips as well and the left hand side is the male connector now as you can see these connectors are not rocket science but it is really, really important that the wire has a proper connection with the metal part of the connector. And I want to show you a specific tool which can really help to make sure that this connection is properly made. So let's go online and I want to go to Amazon. I want to go to Amazon.com. I am not affiliated with Amazon. I'm not affiliated with this product. Uh, I just want to show you an example of a product that you might want to consider for, during the installation of a system. So I'm here at Amazon.com and let's just do a quick search. Let's do solar crimping tool. And you can see there's plenty of options available. Um, I don't know if at the time that when you are watching this course, if these products will still be available, but I just want to show you the functionality of one of these tools, one of these kits. So let's select one, doesn't matter. Yeah, let's select this one. So here, let's go to images. So here you can see that it's got a couple of components. So of course, it's got the uh, the small clamps that you can use in order to screw the caps on, which can be really handy, especially when you are disassembling the, um, the connector, because sometimes they're a little bit stuck during assembling. Um, it is questionable whether that is useful. Um, you got all the metal pins there. Let's go, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's take this one. So the reason why I want to show you is this. Please, when you are connecting the metal part to the wire, please don't use a normal ply or something because what you want to do is instead of just clamping the wire in between the metal bits, you really want to like squeeze and like kind of squeeze it around it because you really want to make sure that that connection is proper. I've seen so many systems whereby there were some vague complaints about the performance of the system and then finally just this connection between the wire and the metal bit instead of like properly squeeze and really hold in place it was kind of like squeezed together and then it starts to corrode over time and you get more resistance. So you can um, you can avoid a bad connection by using uh, such a crimping tool, right? Where it's really squeezed around the wire. So I think that's enough about connectors. I think that's all you need to know for.